Okay, right here is a 1994 Manitowoc 4600. The 4600 was first introduced by Manitowoc in 1961 as a replacement for the older 4500 model and became one of the most popular and successful crawler dragline excavators in its class. According to the serial number, this particular 4600 that you are looking at right here is the third to last unit built, which is pretty cool. Now, let's go and get a closer look at the 4600. To help give you an idea of the size of a 4600, this dragline measures 17 feet 2 inches tall from the ground to the top of the operator's cab and 21 feet wide at the undercarriage. The 4600 was available from Manitowoc with boom sizes ranging from 100 to 140 feet in length with corresponding bucket sizes ranging from 6 to 8 cubic yards. This 4600 is equipped with a 140 foot boom and a 7.5 cubic yard bucket. Right here you can see where the drag rope runs out through the fair lead. The 4600 was equipped with standard 60 inch wide crawler shoes to spread the weight of this machine when it's working on a softer ground surface. And each of the massive crawlers that you see on this drag line measure 26 feet 1 inch in length and 4 foot 1 inch in height. Okay, now let's go up on the 4600. Through this door is the engine room. Let's go inside and check it out. Okay, now let's talk about the powering system on this machine. The 4600 was available from Manitowoc as either a twin engine or single engine machine with multiple different engine configurations depending on what the customer preferred. Twin engine power was standard for the 4600, with the standard engines of choice being two Cummins diesels, one KTA 1150C, or in the case of this machine, a KT19 inline six-cylinder diesel engine that produces 431 horsepower, and an N855C inline six-cylinder diesel engine that produces 215 horsepower, both of which you can see right here inside of this 4600. Optional Detroit power was also offered for the 4600, which included two different twin Detroit engine configurations, which were a 12V71N rated at 393 horsepower and a 671N rated at 195 horsepower. 
The second Detroit configuration also consisted of a 12V71N with the same power rating but was partnered with a larger 8V71N rated at 272 horsepower. With twin engine power, each engine on this machine drives a three-stage torque converter with the exception of the 12V71 and 8V71 configuration in which both engines drive two Vicon controlled torque converters. The 4600 features a variable independent control or Vicon transmission which provides variable power to all main functions. Clutches are engaged when little or no torque is transmitted from the diesel engine eliminating clutch wear and slippage once the clutch is set, the engine RPM or controlled torque converter output is increased to provide variable speed or torque. This allows the operator to have full control to regulate the speed and power of the machine to meet the job requirements. The front engine on this machine drives the main drums, while the rear engine powers the swing, travel, and mast hoist functions. Variable speed and torque is achieved by engine throttles without the need for slipping clutches and brakes. Single engine power was optional for the 4600. Engine choices included a Cummins VTA 1710C rated at 685 horsepower, a Caterpillar D379 rated at 635 horsepower, or a Caterpillar 3412 DIT rated at 630 horsepower. With single engine power, the engine drives through the transmission case two Vicon controlled torque converters. The front converter would power the drums while the rear converter would power the swing, travel, and mast hoist functions. Variable speed and torque is achieved by converter sleeve valves without the need for slipping clutches and brakes. The engines on this machine receive their fuel from two big diesel fuel tanks which hold a combined 910 gallons of fuel. And Manitowoc also offered optional straight electric power for the 4600, again depending on what the customer preferred. Because this is a newer 4600, the air intakes and air cleaners for each diesel engine are mounted inside of the engine house, unlike older units which had the air intakes and air cleaners mounted on the top house of this machine. You can see a single air intake and air cleaner for the N855, and you can see two air intakes and air cleaners for the K19. On the left side of this machine, underneath this cover that you see right here, is the light generator, which will power all the lights on the boom for when this drag line is working at night. And right here you can see where the boom pins to the superstructure on the machine. Okay, over here inside of this compartment, you can get a better view of the K19 Cummins diesel engine. And on the right side of this machine are the engine radiators.
behind this cover that you see right here is the interlock chain, which controls the sprocket floating on the drag drum shaft with a sprocket bolted to the hoist drum. How this works is very simple. The floating sprocket is clutch controlled, and when the clutch is applied, the interlock chain synchronizes the speed of both the hoist and drag drum rotation. This ensures that the drag rope is casted out at the same rate as the hoist rope is pulled in. Additionally, the interlock also allows for bucket lowering and reeling in. The benefits to this are drag and hoist brake riding are eliminated, thus reducing brake wear. The drag rope is kept tight during hoisting, thus keeping the bucket level and bucket tension on the drag rope is transmitted through the interlock to the hoist drum, thus reducing hoist power and fuel consumption. On a 4600, the front drum is the hoist drum and the rear drum is the drag drum. Let's go up inside and check out the operator's cab. From here you can get a good overview inside the operator's cab of the 4600. Okay, now let's take a look at what some of these controls do. Okay, all of the gauges that you see out on the right and left side control panels monitor each diesel engine. This set of gauges on the right side control panel monitors the front diesel engine and this set of gauges over here on the left side control panel monitors the rear diesel engine. The 4600 features all air controls for all main functions. These two foot pedals that you see on the floor directly out in front of the operator's seat control the drum brakes. The right pedal controls the hoist drum brake and the left pedal controls the drag drum brake. These two hand levers that you see over here on the right side control both the hoist and drag functions on this machine. The right hand lever controls the hoist and the left hand lever controls the drag. With standard twin engine power, each hand lever operates both the clutch and engine throttle and how this works is very simple. Pull back halfway to engage the clutch and pull back all the way to increase the engine RPM. With single engine power, first lever movement would engage the clutch and further lever movement would increase the converter output. And both of these hand levers will also engage the drum interlock by simply pushing forward on either lever. This hand lever that you see over here on the left side controls the swing functions on the 4600. And if you look over here, off to the left side control panel, you can see other switches and controls to work other various functions on this machine. This big hand lever that you see down here, off to the far left side, engages the 4600 into either the dig mode, travel mode, or the mast hoist mode. And from right here, you can get a crystal clear view of what the operator would see if he were running a 4600.
and the overall operating weight of a 4600 dragline can range anywhere from 197.8 to 216 tons, depending on boom length. In this particular configuration, when equipped with a 140 foot boom and a 7.5 cubic yard bucket, as you see right here, the 4600 weighs in at 216.6 tons. And probably the biggest rival for Manitowoc's 4600 dragline was Lima's 2400 model. And the model 4600 was also available from Manitowoc as either a standard lifting crane, ringer, or clamshell. The last 4600 left the Manitowoc factory in 1994 following an incredible 33 year production period. But there she is, one of the most popular and successful crawler drag lines ever built by Manitowoc, the 4600.